Can a robotic arm function as a more lifelike extension of the human hand? Faster, more precise, safer, and better at the assigned task. A team of UW scientists and engineers working at the Applied Physics Laboratory believe the answer is yes. What we're doing here is we're working with the, uh, the, the submersible manipulator test bed here at APL. And what's unique about this project is our ability to combine the spatial awareness of a computer system with the perceptive capability of a human operator. We use a, what's called a haptic device. Haptics, tactile feedback technology, which takes advantage of the sense of touch by applying forces, vibrations, or motions to the user. Doing for the sense of touch what computer graphics do for vision. And it's an input device, just like a, you would use a mouse uh, with a computer, but it's actually, it's giving three-dimensional input. So you're actually defining a, a point in space where you want your robotic arm to go. It senses your position of your hand, and it can exert force on your hand as well. So that means that when you control the robot using the haptic device, we can actually give you force feedback through the same device. Force feedback can essentially assist you to guide you places where you should go by pushing you there and preventing you from making mistakes or collision by pushing back on your hand. The Blue Haptics robotic control system is based upon key algorithms developed by Frederick Ryden at the UW Department of Electrical Engineering. Algorithms originally applied to robotic surgery, then reapplied to robotics underwater. In thinking about it, uh, as a group, we decided, gee, we have a way to have sense of touch for remote tele-robotics. Maybe it will work underwater using the algorithms that had already been developed. What APL brought us was expertise in underwater operations, underwater sensors, and underwater robotics that we could combine with our haptic technology. Blue Haptics technology creates a virtual representation based on a combination of sonar, video, and laser inputs. The coolest thing about this project is the fact that we're taking technology developed in university labs and we're actually commercializing it. Blue Haptics chose the underwater market to be our first commercialization opportunity because there are over a thousand ROVs operating today supporting the oil and gas industry. And that is a number that is growing by 27% over year over year. There's also $1.7 billion a year being invested in this industry. Helping Blue Haptics grow into a going concern, the University of Washington Center for Commercialization, C4C. You know, C4C is able to provide a lot of resources that allows them to move very fast. One of the key inventors of technology, uh, now Dr. Frederick Ryden, who most of this work was done as part of his PhD, you know, really wanted to be involved in commercializing, going to startup, and we were able to provide a commercialization fellowship to Frederick to give him a year or two you know, for the work on the technology as well as you know, explore the business issues and uh, you know, figure out you know, what is really the ideal product. What Blue Haptics would like to do is to give the operator a more immersive experience of the underwater operations, such that they get better spatial awareness and better sense of telepresence, and, they, and therefore make better operations. Blue Haptics is making it easier and safer and more reliable to have humans use remote robots. This has implications for infrastructure inspection, for homeland security, for anti-pollution activities. It shouldn't be harder to use a robot than to use your hand. We would like to bring some of that sense of touch back from the robot to the hand so that it can be used to guide precision operations. There are multiple areas uh, of research. This is somewhat of a multidisciplinary project involving computer vision, uh, sensor fusion, uh, control theory, and ocean engineering to be able to package this in a system that can operate at depth. Science at work for you. This is APL, the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington in Seattle.